All right. Welcome to the. Is this the fourth week? I I guess this is the fourth week of uh, Duelist Worldwide competition. And it is me and Eros and Jay. So if you have any words, it's your boy. No way, it's your Asian Jay. <laughs> So this week we only had two matches actually complete thus far. So that's uh, West Europe versus Southeast Asia and those other people. Uh, yeah, our scheduling is, seems to have been a real problem for the guys this week. And I guess there's some kind of moral issue because some teams, they probably already know that they're not going to make to the top two. So. But we'll see. I hope people have fun because that's the point of this game. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of our games will uh, draw a lot of crowds. <laughs> <laughs> I know we used to talk about like the uh, factions and that kind of stuff, so I put the stats up on the screen. So right, I don't so know. Let's have a look at this. Um, is there Vitruvian, any? <laughs> Vitruvian is uh, doing their best Vanar impersonation. <laughs> I think that's mostly because people just insist on playing Cipheron for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, people people just haven't adapted to to the loss of like Reader. They've just been building the decks exactly the same, and it has not been working for them. Absolutely not. Um, it, it's actually interesting that the two highest, well, not really, it, it should be no surprise that the two best factions, if going by win percentages, would be Lion and Songhai. Mm. Um, it, it's interesting because being the two, like, or one of the two original factions, they just have so much more support going f um, in what the various decks are sort of like capable of and, the, and all their roles. Whereas I, I think people just have been playing some of these decks just all wrong. There's like no imagination behind it. You know, Bessian has to be Swarm or Trial. Truvian, yeah, I don't know what Truvian is doing recently. Um, yeah, I have no <laughs> idea either. It's a very confusing time. I'm quite surprised by the lack of Valve. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Hopefully we'll see if people bring anything interesting to the table. That's what I really want. I want interesting decks. I don't want the same stuff, but I want slightly tweaked stuff. I want to see if people can mix it up a bit. That's what the, the bands and the format is all about. Absolutely. And I think the format has also like a kind of returned to the early days of Duelist, but, but, but we'll see. Uh, so for the first set, we are gonna move on to the West Europe versus uh, United Nations slash Australia's, and just as a disclaimer, I'm playing in this team, so I guess we are ready to go. Just a moment. Australian dance game. Okay, so first off, we have the uh, Muramasa facing of Past and Blast. Okay, interestingly playing Ragnora. Um, now, playing Decimus in your Magma decks hasn't exactly, isn't exactly new or unique. This was something that was done quite a lot by Valve initially um, mm. as a way to counter artifact decks and just to have a higher source of um, burst damage. Uh, but not really something you see quite often with Ragnora, since you know they're fairly good at doing their aggro game without having Decimus. It, as as weird as it is to say, the card has seemed a bit slow for this type of <laughs> archetype for the past <laughs> few seasons. But I think like the bans in this tournament in particular has kind of slowed the game a bit down. So like you, you will not be facing a fault on the six mana and. Titan is not happening, and uh, Wanderer is not like outvaluing at every game, so yeah. you have more time to develop stuff. So Mirror was likely playing Mantra, or, uh, well, possibly just Mantra. Like Arcanist is a bit of a no-go, seeing as Owl is out. Mm. Um, although, I, I should mention that mid-range 
um, mid-range Songhai using this particular general was actually popular and did quite well in events, um, surprisingly enough. Never could figure out why, but it just <laughs> worked. I guess people never kind of played around it or expected it. <laughs> Play around with BBS news. Okay, so if Mura has the adjudicator, probably go. We'll try to go for a standard diagonal opener. Although I do feel that's incorrect, um, seeing as you need to respect the possible lava slasher. Mm. And really, it's not like you're contesting for the tiles as Songhai anyway. So there's no reason to give him any value if, if you can help. Yeah. I think the discussion at this point was uh, a lot about like, uh, do you equip uh, artifact or do you play uh, your only minion on the board? So. Yeah, I mean, artifacts are fairly safe. You could easily have equipped a Blood Rage Mask if, if you had it. I don't really like equipping it as early, unless I've got like multiple of them in my hand and just uh, hot as hell. But but no, otherwise this is this is fine. Um, yeah, it does run the risk of potential, what, we can... Yeah, this is just a lot of damage we have in our hand here. Yeah. Jeez. The pos positive, uh, the, uh, or the placing of the rocket top there was specifically to play around Lava Slasher here, but... Yeah. No, 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 that was clever. Um, Obviously, the problem really is that the, uh, the rocket top there is not really doing anything right now, but... Yeah. Still. Yeah, you can't really tell what um, what Ragnora is on. You, you could just be expecting standard eggs. Um, Aggro is a bit of a tougher matchup, simply because they're so fast. Mm. Uh, so you're, basically your goal as Mantra in this matchup is just taking as little damage as possible, and you're just controlling the board. You're just outright making sure they just do not have anything stick ever. And here we see the uh, Aggro coming out. Yeah. But I was going to say, this is a problem that you should have probably expected. Absolutely. But then again, you're not playing around that. like. No, I mean, sure, you say that in in hindsight, but at the same time, it it's one of those things where you could have easily just hugged the wall and played it and passed. Mm. Not necessarily to play around, you know, flash lava slasher. You know, I don't blame you for <laughs> playing into that. But um, just because there's really no reason for you to take center before you really know what you're going up against. Yeah. I guess it's like one of those uh, ingrained things that you have to move forward because like every other deck kind of requires you to contest the mana tiles, but there are few decks that actually prefer to just hug the wall and not move. Like Sides, for yeah. example, they just want to stick to the wall and wait until they get their artifacts out and so on forth so yeah basically all you're playing for is time really um and obviously fast and blast gonna look to put Mara on a clock here um a lot of ways he can get out of this there's, there's a lot of tricky things that mantra can do you, you could easily have equipped um potentially a spear clear one of his minions and a twin strike you could potentially have a katatsu to ping one of them off um and use, say, Thunderbomb. So there's quite a few ways you can mm. mitigate as much damage. Oh, there's the Thunderbomb. Although I don't necessarily agree with the ordering. You could have taken two less damage there. Um, yeah. There's no reason to go face this early on Fast and Blast. And I think the f four damage to face is going to be more relevant than you might let on. Yeah, I think this is just where the experience will come in. Like if you're playing Mantra, for example, is just to know where your health should be in this matchup because the temptation to just go face is pretty high. Uh, and the answer there is just as high as possible. <laughs> like really, your only goal is just getting as much mana as possible, just as much cards as possible. Like honestly, if, if my opponent skips a turn here, I'm happy just skipping back. I just want cards and mana. Uh, because that's ultimately how I'm going to win this game.
Well, Fast and Blast doesn't really have much fuel to his hand either, so... Yeah, not much he can really do at the moment, although he can apply some pressure. Um, a Rage Binder is, is a very tough unit in general for Songhai to deal with. The problem that Fast and Blast had is his hand is looking pretty low at the moment. Yeah, so going for the two minions, both um, having rebirth, so quite hard to actually clear here. But uh, his hand's not looking good at the moment. On the bright side, he's playing the uh, Ragnora, so there's always the eggs coming out. But. Yeah, no. Um, it's normally w when I play when I play Mantra um, or these type of controlling uh, burn lists. It, it's not so much for eggs. It, it's really just managing your resources, uh, timing your cards right. This particular line of play for Fast and Blast is one of the tougher ones to deal with, simply because you probably not going to be able to clear both of these minions and that's the issue because as low as his hand is that greater fortitude is going to be dealing a lot of damage next to him yeah. here we go with the blood rage mask yeah possibly just looking for um, a movement spell to get as far as where as possible create some distance perhaps uh, worst option would be the backstab one or the draw. No, that's fine. Mm. Fast was likely going to replace the flash and not really doing much for him. Ooh, Elucidator. That's, that's really good. Wow. That's some damage. Uh, Elucidator, not a card I've seen in a very long time. It used to be very popular in. Well, like when Tiger was still three mana, it was. In the original Valf Agro decks, not really something you saw. Even in even when um, Ragro, as it became popular, became a thing, still not a minion you saw that often. As uh, Ladder still had quite a bit of burn to it, so it's you know there is a risk associated with just taking four damage. But yeah, this is going to be a lot of damage. And you have the crater for to go with it, so just like just numbers, like I don't count that yeah. high. Yeah, Mura's gonna lose his mask here. Um, still at a full hand, but uh, you know, he, like again, it it it's just his HP. Like I'm not sure he's gonna. Ah, uh, he's but he's gonna survive for another two turns. Which is kind of problematic if you play mantra because the mantra is going up only after the sixth mana turn yeah see that's what that's the mm -hmm. issue that people um misinterpret with mantra fire straw mantra is actually uh, while people can argue about its interactivity um it, it's actually a fairly slow combo if if you never draw into um, your adjudicators it's it's just i mean at the earliest you're going to combo off at eight mana which is just way too slow for what people are doing and do this these mm -hmm. days and we unfortunately haven't seen a single adjudicator yet. We have, however, seen um, a rock adopter, so potentially does have a boulder hole in hand. Could have a mana vortex. Thunderbomb. Uh, fun oh, okay, well, no mantra this turn. Um, Muramasa helped out by the fact that his opponent is basically drawing dead, He's got no good cards in hand. Just going to face with the boulder. Because of the eight gates. Mm. It's it's tough to say whether that's correct. Um, without knowing his his hand. He could have a spiral and some more burn. Ooh, that's a good draw. But yeah, so Rag's plan would just now be just to at the same time preserve health, um, and get in as much cheap damage as possible. You know. Uh, yeah. Possibly make the egg here, spawn it, get that three damage in. Uh, hope your opponent doesn't draw that mantra, which probably would end the game on the spot. Um, but other than that, yeah, you're just drawing to your outs, hoping maybe get another elucidator. Uh, tigers, if you run them, maybe uh, save us by alphas if, if you run those. Although I don't think people are really running that hard. 
I think Cypress Spine Alpha is kind of an interesting part that in a sense it's too slow for the game but in the other hand mm. it's still just like minus 5 health to opponents so no, definitely. So this is a, a slight misplay from Fast and Blast. Where he should have put the Inceptor is just above just above the egg because if Muro can BBS for a backstab um, you could potentially clear the egg with say a ghost lightning or Gitatsu and then clear the Inceptor and take no damage um, it's it's a minor thing and probably not that relevant um, but it, it is something to consider when trying to play around with BBS spells That's okay. a fairly clean answer to the board but that's not within the game here. No, still unfortunately dead to this. Okay, or not. One mana left. Wow, this looks like this is going to be a draw. If I were Fast and Blast, I would just draw this game out. Yep. You're not... And you're not going to win by making this go long against a Mantra player, because every card they have is just burn spells. I think you only been in condition there was like a Macantor. Yeah, I mean you were potentially looking at Macanto, but you were looking at only Macanto. Yeah. The Lucid Edit was not gonna do it. Um so yeah, okay. No, that was that was a good play. And now for the rematch. So the rule of the tournament is that if the game is a draw, then you have to replay using the same decks. Which at this point is kind of... Uh, no, that seems pretty fair to me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't necessarily think it ad advantages like any particular party. Um, obviously, the unfair bit, if there was any, would be uh, simply the spawns. Um, if if there was a way I could enforce it, I would make them start over on the exact same starting positions. Uh, because you could have a case where the mantra player now knows they need to play more defensively, and going as player two is far more than preferable for them. So I, I feel pretty bad if I was, say, the aggro rag player, and now the mantra player gets to go as as a player to going second. Uh, but that's not the case here. Yeah, this uh, was kind of, I think, tricky for Mura because uh, there's no surprise factor at all anymore. Mm -hmm. So Fast and Blast knows exactly what he needs to do here. I mean, the same applies to Mura, but uh, on the other mm -hmm. hand, Mura doesn't have as much uh, at, uh, position to take advantage of the fact that the uh, opponent is playing aggressive because that's but, already a bad it, matchup yeah but but in the same vein uh, looking at fast and lost decks as aggressive as it is um, i'm not sure your plan changes much like when you saw the general like alone you were probably full-on expecting it was it was firestorm mantra and against these decks it's just being as aggressive as possible and preserve your life as much as possible um, honestly, um, if if this were me, I'd actually say that uh, that the mantra player would be in general more advantaged by now knowing how aggressive the opponent is, as the opponent always knows what to expect or what not to expect for, from a mantra player. Like you know what to do against them. Um, I don't think that I like this particular play. That Fast and Blast went for. Um, you could have flashed the young Silifar onto the tile and Tectonic spikes them here, which would have gotten rid of the artifact and just tried to draw into some better cards for next turn. Uh, this does leave you in a soft position where over the next two, three turns, the Songhai player is just going to run away and hold burn spells at your face and clear your minions. So I'm not quite sure I agreed with that particular line of play. And here you have the yeah. Tectonic Spikes coming out. And uh, now unfortunately you're forced to skip your turn. 
basically. Then I can you can just like a flash, uh, say the uh, Silithar here because you have double flash, so it's still a bit tricky board for Mura to deal with here, seeing that Astro's minions have the Reaper. I stand corrected. The artifact would have uh, stayed regardless. I'm so used to this only being cast with a certain <laughs> four four. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean your hand was bad. Like I would have still liked to use spikes there just to get some something going. I have to say it was kind of refreshing to see uh, acro acro rag coming out. That wasn't like trying to go fully on the X or anything and, yeah, and I, like, this look. is super aggressive at least from fast and fast um, like I still think um, X is uh, uh, slept on well I mean slept on is the wrong word um, Zoetic Charm is a stupidly powerful card and people really can lean on that more um, it's it's not just all about having having lance and having that particular tempo swing. I I think you could even fit charm into into this deck. Um, maybe include cryptographer um, and just also have that slightly slower line. Um, if I were to optimize this deck, I'd probably include heralds if it is not there already. Um, I haven't seen any yet. Um, but noticeable when when um, Decimus originally came out and when the Starhorn Burn decks became popularized, the first wave of them were actually the worst version of that deck. Because when it became really good is when the players learned just to slow down a little. Like, not a lot, but include some healing. Just uh, pace yourself. Because burn decks and other aggro decks can really capitalize on you having all this. And as you can see, tectonic spikes, flame blood, elucidator, you can really end up doing a lot of damage to yourself. So, yeah, in this case, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, it needs to be careful of his life total against the burn player here. So, there's got a few plays he could potentially be making here with the Reaper and the Incubator. Yeah, the problem with Ripper at in this stage is because of that spear, his Ripper is not going to be able to hit Mura twice. So we're not going to be able to clear here. That kind of looks like he's just going to tectonic spikes here. Yeah, uh, so I think it's fair. Which is fair. Um, no, which is definitely fair. Let's just go for the flame blood. Oh, okay, that's that was a good draw. Plus the flame uh, blood. I mean, I'd still be sweating profusely. You're on eleven life of a mantra play, but while being on five mana, has has six cards in hand, and they only really need uh, honestly two phoenix fires would do it here. Two phoenix fires, a thunder bomb, and a phoenix fire. Um, yeah, this was a very aggressive line of play. I don't necessarily agree with this at all. I think this play would have been a lot worse if the adjudicators would have come out because then the match just goes kind of out of the window. But still, Mura doesn't seem to have quite the answer here. Yeah, six cards in hand, but just doesn't seem to be drawing what he needs at the moment. Uh, I believe the hand was pretty much filled with like uh, mantras and uh, phoenix fires yeah. and stuff like that, that you just don't have the mana yet to play correctly. Mm. So... So, if... Again, this is always tough without knowing the contents. Um, okay, he's looking to clear that prime. That is, that is a good move. This line of play was actually insisted upon by Stoic because he was afraid of the uh, Decimus Spikes combo here. Because that would have actually been lethal. 
just barely, but still. No, wait, it, I think it was the uh, double crater fort combo, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say the, the fort combo would have got him there. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's important that he not be able, that Ragnar not be able to actually hit um, should I over here and break that artifact? Uh, because that's all that's really protecting um, Mura from a set combo at the moment. Yeah. Um, if if you're Ragnar, you'd you'd normally be pretty worried. Um, like you've got an incredible hand over here, but. Um, at the same time, your life is running pretty low. You can't reach or should die. I guess he could. Throwing away the death spikes combo. Interesting. Okay, we're just gonna clear, clear this two three, I guess. Let's just go face, go face. Hold on. Yeah. Ooh, I don't like that at all. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm not sure replacing Decimus was the correct choice there. Um, I mean, we have another one, so <laughs> it didn't really matter. Um, but no, you could put uh, since you have a Decimus like and spikes, that, that whole sequence of play was perfectly fine. But you really should have cleared that 2-3 there, as it would limit the amount of damage that Murrow would need to actually end the game over here. Mm. Uh, so yeah, Fast and Blast just having all the luck in the world at the moment. Then again, he has thrown like half of his deck at this point, so... Yeah, no adjudicators from the Mantra player. No... Uh, honestly, not a lot of burn. Most of it has been spent trying to just clear and contain um, this Ragnora play, and you see, as I say again, that's the disadvantage of going first, um, especially when your mantra is critical. You have as much mana as possible to work with, um, and yeah, if he can't kill him this turn, it doesn't seem like it's going to be the case. Yep. Replace the young Silifar, see if you can draw into anything. Ah, looks like we're going to another draw. Yeah, this is kind of, this was pretty emotionally rough for the Western Europe team, <laughs> <laughs> for reasons. Um, I mean, if if I'm brutally honest, I'd actually feel quite um, lucky uh, to scrape out of that one. Um, at that point in time, a lot of draws for, f for, for the Magma player could have been lethal there, a mechanical perhaps. Um, but again, as I said, like if if you just had a herald, if you just heal up a bit, like that spikes would have sealed you the game. Yeah. But fast and plus is believing that the Akro is the way and just going full on, because I I don't oh, okay. think we've seen like any healing, and it's just like. Heralds or Primus Fists and like e anything is just to get to the face as much damage. Which I believe is the oh. correct choice. Yeah. Alright, so that was a great replace. That's a really strong opener it seems from Fast and Blast. Mura probably like needs to know that he needs to be as defensive as possible um, at this point. Uh, We'll see if his nerves hold out. Hmm. So, it's interesting. I've always debated with people that Phoenix Fire going face is 100% wrong nearly <laughs> every single time. And, and it's, not just, it, it's not just being pedantic. Like, uh, really, uh, it could just be a style thing as well. I'm a far more defensive type of player. Like, my Mandry games always went to, like, nine mana like 11 mana it, it, it just went really long um i prefer controlling the board and just keeping up on cards because the more mana you have the more likely you are to actually win these games that being said 
uh, for more aggressively inclined players. Uh, it's, it, depending on what you have in, in your hand, you could just throw as much burn at their face as you possibly can and, and hope you get there. But interestingly, as chat also points out, they do know that the Magma player is playing Tectonic Spikes. Um, so that could also be a reason to dump hand. I don't really agree with that because they could just choose to not use spikes. You know, like Magma's got good enough quality creatures that you can't really afford as a Songhai player to say go down to three cards and say, well, they could just spikes me because they could just war beast you. They could just put a slasher in your face. Um, yeah. But again, not necessarily so much a wrong move as it is a different style of play. So we'll see if that pays off over here. Mm. So two things we two things the magma player can do here. One would be playing the slasher, just in the face, which probably is correct in this instance. Uh, if you had a tectonic spikes, argument could be made for backlining a decimus. No spear from Muro here yet. Um, so you would probably need two cards to actually clear that. Um, but no, this seems fine. You've just got as much pressure just right there in the Songhai player's face, and this is looking particularly rough. Yeah, that 4-7 to the straight to the face, like... Uh, hard game. 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 Looking at potential, yeah, goes Lightning. And a possible Twin Strike? No, I don't have a mana for that. Another Ghost Lightning, maybe? Kotatsu. I think this was the first Kotatsu the uh, team drew the full set. Alright. Unfortunately, but... unfortunately, they are going to be able to use this Elucidator and develop an egg. Um, if they choose to be aggressive, I honestly think you can. I wouldn't. I wouldn't care about playing into a twin strike or or stuff like that. Your hand is like your hand is gas. You're drawing into two mercanters, and you've already got the uh, decimus in hand. So I'll just throw the damage out there. Yeah, I guess the uh, big discussion is that do you actually just keep all, all your hand, or do you just maybe play it a bit slower and mm. develop decimus, but. Just going face, I think it's probably just. The yeah, like here. honestly, like like honestly, the only thing that I'd really think about here is my positioning. Um, you really just want to be playing around the thunder bomb. Just make it as awkward as possible for the Songhai player. So in this instance, for instance, I'd move the, I'd move the lava slasher either behind or not diagonally. Um, from Muramasa, I'd play the Elucidator, I'd have it loop around him, just make sure those minions aren't standing together, um, I'd space my egg, so you can see him doing the same with the Slash over. Just make it as awkward as possible to actually deal with. Yeah. Um, and just get as much damage on. Now I opted to not do that, um, which, which is fine, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, you've got the Decimus, but the Decimus just isn't as big of a threat if you're not going to be drawing into into spikes at this point. And again, you've got two Macantos and the Lucidator in hand, you've got a lot of damage. Yep, and there's the answer. Still, as the uh, the previous games have shown, the uh, clock is ticking out. And like this 15 health, 5 mana is already pretty. Yeah, like look, if I was more, I'd be feeling really um, hard done here. Your best chance to win this matchup was probably that first game in the set. Yeah. Because because going as player one, it, it really is a tick against the clock against these type of um, aggressive decks, especially as aggressive as this rag has been. Uh, because you just don't have the mana to work with. You don't have that luxury of time. And here we saw the team debating the uh, Call of Metal or just replays. Mm. I think the metal just replaces fine, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, 
Yeah, I think they're going for their bodies around. Do you think it would have been just better to backhand her there and just like, you know, go face and keep the elucidator for a bit later when you have the coronated lethal? Just uh, because you're playing against the mantra. Sure. Like, look, if if I, I'm I'm actually fine with this play. The only thing I probably wouldn't have done is I face myself. Uh, you're getting to a point where Songhai can start dealing, you know, like these type. Of um, damage breakpoints. Now, luckily, he hasn't drawn a Rock Adopter or Adjudicator yet, so you're probably not gonna die this turn. Um, but it is getting pretty close. The problem being that Mura is on 10 life once again. Um, as we say, tick tock. Mechanical was probably the safer play. Um, because again, you've just got so much you know, damage in hand as the rag player. I don't really see the need to go face um, and risk throwing that game. But as we can see, Songhai player running out of cards crucially. So, yeah, double whammy over here. Running out of cards, running out of life. And still a lot of gas in the tank for this Ragnora. And there's still the Techno spikes just to, you know, draw in more if needed. Interesting replace on the Macanter there. Well, you're probably thinking that if you draw into a um, Decimus, that would be, you know, game over on the spot. <laughs> um, and you do have Tech Spike in hand and Macanter, so you could probably just Macanter him this turn um, and Tech Spike next turn, or possibly drawing into it. Yeah, just create as much distance. No egg. Interesting. No. Hmm, let me see. No, I mean with his mana, it, it it's not that big of a deal. But this is a slight. I'm not going to say misplay, but you could have positioned that by playing a egg behind you and moving the panda up behind the egg just to potentially play, play around a flicker better. Um, but again, minor detail at this point. Mura just doesn't have the cards in hand. Looking at a potential mantra over here, heal up a bit. Yeah, there we go. But unfortunately, this is not dealing with the board. Uh, Ragnora might be on three, but seven damage on board. We're going down to ten again. I believe. And once again, once yeah. again, Decimus will do it. Okay, so the play seems fairly straightforward to me here. Um, I mm -hmm. take Tonic Spikes first. And kill yourself? Yeah, absolutely. You're a Magma player. You <laughs> should do that. Yeah, I believe the uh, Mura had the Phoenix Fire in hand, but, you know, there's one mana up. The uh, um, the Ripper is only three damage, so uh, okay, yeah. One more turn to the mantra player. And really at this point, oh, 
all comes down to luck. Yeah. Two cards in hand, but again, this mantra being uh, being built the way it is, you've got so many draws. You could have Thunder Bomb, you could have Phoenix Fire, you could have potential Spiral over here. Um, you, you've got another mantra, perhaps. You've just got so many draws, which could translate into potential damage. So not drawing it would be incredibly unlucky. I think we already know the answer of those replaces and draws. Yeah, I know if you're hesitating as much as you had Mantra, lost it by now, so this looks this looks like Murray simply doesn't have it. Oh wow, you hit the rook at top there. And just emptying the hand here, going for yeah. the honorable suicide. Uh, really unfortunate from the song I play there. Like it's, it's uh, tough. Like you've got, like again, you, like your deck is just filled with so much damage, and not drawing it there should feel really rough. Um, yeah, ultimately not much. I think Murray could have done differently in games two and three. Uh, I, I do feel that you could have probably played a bit more defensively and to the board early on in, in game one. Um, especially when you were going as player two and had more mana to work with. But yeah, just a very aggressive start and some insane draws from the Magma player. So yeah, props to him, well done. Alright, so we are moving on to the next game. Which is uh, me versus Icy Fire. Once again, first year of playing of the United Nations Trayas. So, oh, Icy seeming to play the the swarm variant of this Brome deck. Uh, actually, a very powerful deck, mind you. This is something that I first saw being played um, by uh, Discord. User Joseph Stalin or Re as he <laughs> come known. <laughs> uh, very fast deck, very aggressive. Like, like again, you get to play your cheap line on minions, and uh, possible like Imperial would just be translated into loads of damage. All right, so seeing uh, by the two drop Jim is playing, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say we might be seeing some structures in the future. Of course, it's going to be structured. Seems it is the best, <laughs> the best Metro list by far. Like, why wouldn't it be? Um, honestly, I, I could actually see just Agro Vitruvian doing well. Um, I, I am disappointed in not seeing any of these Vitruvian decks playing Ank. Like, not yeah. just because I love that card, but simply because you know you've got Ragnora, you've got Reaver, you've got. Um, just all these uh, token strats. It, it's, it's just a really good uh, tech card that people overlook because they associated it with playing all in artifacts. Yeah. When in in fact, Ankh was a common card to be playing if you were playing Agra Vitruvian like way back even like 2015, 2016. This was a common tournament tech. Yeah. So, I remember uh, that it was actually pretty, you could often find it even in a slower list sometimes. Just because yeah, it's that just looks good. Yeah. Blast is just a good mechanic, um, but at the same time, that being said, Vitruvian does seem to have been pigeonholed the last few seasons mm. with the cards selections decks fairly building themselves, so not leaving you much slots to ever really um, um, innovate and try out something new. Yeah. This turn was actually pretty tricky because these lions are actually super difficult to deal with as Vitruvian. Because yeah, lions. <laughs> lions are annoying. You need to be careful because you really want to. And yeah, you've got these lions. You can potentially hit them twice and just clear them as clean as possible. I mean, my biggest concern would probably be that and Dreamgazer because that would 
if if you're playing Dreamgazer and you're not playing Trial, I'd be scared out of my mind of um, Congregation here. Like, I, I would just know it's coming. I'd know if I'd listen, EV has it in hand, he's potentially drawing it. Um, so yeah, correctly clearing the line here. Um, uh, I have to say, I have to say that I had absolutely no idea what Icy Fire was playing because uh, this conglomeration deck was probably popular when I wasn't playing so actively, so I had like absolutely oh, no idea <laughs> what, no, what was enough. coming up. No, yeah, like it's one of those things. If if they're not playing trial and you see a dream gazer, that's usually the hard tell yeah. that they're playing this deck. Um, so priority wise, like look, it's it. It's tough. You have the mercy of your obelisk spawns, but uh, the deck is quite fragile if they can't get minions to stick. It, it, yeah. They don't have a lot of out-of-hand bursts. Um, they're weak to dispel. Um, that being said, I don't think this is the type of deck which would be going all in on light benders and EMPs. Yeah. I think this deck is also actually not that good against like structures because the structures if you if they manage to stick uh, your cheap minions will be kind of well they're really easy to clear with the dervishes yeah i mean yeah absolutely you just have constant ways to clear these minions um mm, so w without knowing what's in your hand my play would possibly be just getting yeah just blocking the brome from being able to potentially clear your obelisk with draining wave um, and clearing the blood here definitely um, if if you can't block them i'm not sure i agree with that because draining wave is popular in these mm. uh, fast type of decks so you could easily have just cleared the minion and still kept your five blaze safe trigon that's trigon well i, I love trigon <laughs> That's a big. Uh, that's a lot of HP. <laughs> I have to I give mean, props to Icy Fire for this coming play because we totally didn't see it coming, which is probably why we can play it around like this. <laughs> but uh, still, this dragon is a. Uh, if he cannot clear it like this turn, it's gonna swing the game. Well, to very looking favorably. at his hand, looking at his hand, depending on. Yeah, depending on where where the spawns, my play would actually be just to block off like most, if not all, of your trigon spawns. Um, I'm not quite sure that is what happened, but um, that's definitely something you could potentially do. I guess I just have to, yeah, they they did block the spawns here. This is I I think. In a in a hindsight, I think it was kind of a mistake to be honest, because you're not actually dealing with the fireplace here, and I think yeah. the fireplace is the biggest threat that the Opelix the, the Opelix list will ever play. Because if the fireplace sticks, none of your minions will be safe, because the three attack boost is uh, very key on this early game. Yeah, it just it just enables so many um, like breakpoints and just a lot of uh, potential cards you could be playing. You could be playing Star's Fury. Uh, one of the actual one of my favorite well I won't say favorite but one of my favorite of the Trivian list to actually play against. Uh, just straight up backline Fireblaze Obelisk as far as possible and just kept on using Third Wish to hold these you know dervishes at you, which was super annoying. Yep. Like here, I would have preferred if you had used the draining wave on the fireplace and cleared that instead of like letting it leave on the board. Yeah, but at the same time, being the brome player, as I say, be susceptible to losing your board. So I'm also not quite sure how you would have done this otherwise, because you really can't let Trigon uh, spawn yeah. any minions. But yeah, at the moment, possibly looking at a Congregation next turn to clear the Trigon and possibly this Fireblaze as well. Yeah. And this Trigon, because it has such a huge health that unless you dispel it or clear it straight away, uh, it kind of like demands the opponent's attention for like one yeah, turn. Yeah, I mean, it, 
and that it's means just that it's practically I'm... immortal. You know, yeah. it's just like how do you how do you like nine HP? How do you get back? So it means that like as a Vitruvian player, you have like one extra turn to actually develop stuff for your five mana and six mana plays because that's where the Vitruvian power cards start to come in. Like packs. I like packs. Like packs, man. I remember when packs was just such an obnoxious opening play. Hmm. <laughs> so six mana turn. Yeah, quite a few things we could be doing over here. Could just straight up be playing two. Uh, two of these golems, getting some buffs rolling. Um, which potentially to me seems better. Oh, blood tier seems to be a good draw. Still a lot of value on the board that you need to clear, so... Yeah, no, 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 definitely. I uh, need to start making decisions. Yeah, there's an argument to be made for Congregation. Like, again, uh, if it was a other deck, I would have possibly... Not necessarily be scared, but possibly be more cautious of um, Lightbender. But as you're playing Obelisk, I don't really think that's a card that you're running in this deck. Yeah, I, I usually find like uh, the uh, four mana slot is kind of like uh, you have better cards to put in there. But I, I remember that back in the day, the uh, Lightbender was actually played in Obelisk lists be just because of it was pretty good card back then. Just straight up. <laughs> Well, it was just good tournament tech. I mean, it was solid against Valve, um, solid against um, Arjun. Uh, you know, really hated on Songhai. Their stuff's traditionally really weak against the spell. But then again, you never really needed much help against Songhai since mm. your Obelisk, like, again, it, it, like, they were just never going to kill it. Yeah. 6 HP is just way too much. Um, I think this is where the, uh, the fact that the fireplace didn't get cleared up kind of hurt Icy Fire because now the Trigon gets to pop up. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely. And here we see, like, again, Trigon Osbalist being so powerful when it sticks uh, because it just allows you to straight up clear as many of these minions as possible. Hmm. Which, uh, while Fireblaze obviously is is very powerful and is extremely threatening, and you should be careful to play around, say, stars and like that, I do feel you could potentially have uh, tried to clear the Trigon instead, yeah. because you just practically gave up your board to get rid of, you know, Fireblaze Obelisk. Oh, that's a big boy. Good old Swarm King Scarab. Swarm King Scarab, very powerful um, card, not very underused in non-wanderer lists. Um, I again, think that's uh, a mistake, personally. Like. No, no, no. That's a that's a massive mistake. Even even the um, even the normal uh, Scarab. I mean, like here's the thing: Magma being as popular as it is, and. Um, Especially with burn strategy, especially with burn. That five seven people, people are so quick to to look at the six HP a stat line and say how good this is. But seven is particularly rough because two burn spell are not going to kill it. It being a five seven means it doesn't die to plasma storm. It doesn't die to rebuke. It's not going to die to circle of life. Um, it's just a incredibly tough thing to remove straight up um, unless they have transform spells. And it can deal a lot of damage, uh, just by itself, or potentially with a follow-up uh, Grandmaster Noshrak, which, yeah, that's a doozy. Yeah, the uh, I think it was Stoic who convinced me to replace the Noshrak with the uh, Swarm King, and I think he is completely correct here. Because yeah, Noshrak might be a little bit slow. I could I could actually see uh, the argument being made for having. A Noshrak as well, but I definitely wouldn't play it over Scarab, yeah. given the choice. And Congregation, here we go. Unfortunately, that doesn't no, help at all. No, unfortunately, this is just not going to be enough. The Swarm King is just going to go to town.
Ugh, this is the second wish now. <sighs> no, we still we're still playing fair here. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna be game. I think the uh, these kind of lists should should have been more popular in the uh, Petruvian be just because like I like the Cipher list we see that uh, this game has actually slowed down or got kind of bit with the removal of Vander and Titan and those kind of other lists because now you have time to play those big minions. So I, I'm yeah, kind of really disappointed that the that we're just not seeing some yeah. creativity from yeah you know the players. I mean, yeah, we used to have mid range lists with uh, the altars. You need to like like as I said, where's the list with Ang? Where's the where's the scarabs? People are just doing generic like aggro or just playing the same deck as minus fault. And yeah, it's just not been working uh, so far this tournament. Alright, so I guess we can move over to the next set. Alright, so here's, a, here's one of my uh, favorite players probably still playing today. Okay, so let me make sure I get the ga correct game. So this is Eastern Europe versus Southeast Asia. Yes, this is the correct game. And like again, this seems to be an aggressive brome deck. Um, possibly trial, but if not, um, could be a similar one to the one we just witnessed. You see the Aurora coming yeah, out. Yeah, the so. Aurora possibly given giving it away. This could just be a trial deck. Yep, and it is. So the liner trial. Promote lots of minions into big things. Mm -hmm. uh, this matchup is interesting. Um, it, I'd say it's very similar to the fault matchup where you shouldn't, you shouldn't think you can just um, activate your trial and, uh, say, win. Magma has enough removal and damage that they can just clear your board every turn. You know, and go face. Uh, but that said, if if the Lionel player plays. I'd say more defensively. Uh, he should be easily able enough to get to his, his trial here, and that should just outvalue Magma in the long run. Like a single tick is going to put most of his stuff, or some of it probably, out of plasma range, out of a brook range. And at that point, yeah, I'm not seeing how Magma is going to win this. But again, that we'll see how aggressive he chooses to be. Two Metal Edgists. Yeah, once again the question is what kind of VAT we are seeing here, is it like a straight up acro or the more mm. slow controlling type of magma you used to see like back in the day? So what I would what I would want the bro not to be doing right now is trying to contest the center board and trying to play a Aurora or something. Uh, it it's very tempting got a powerful board but I'm not sure with as strong of an opener as this magma player had that you want to get too close to that center field at this point of time. It seems to be some discussion about that. But Pertz is a very good um, uh, very experienced with Valve, um, so interesting to see how he's going to approach this matchup. The VBC for his own part, usually a very interesting deck lists, I will say that, whether that be uh, combo lists or uh, just tuned versions of other decks, always has interesting and fun um, in inclusions, so exciting player to watch. Okay, so we're just going to be spending mana getting as much minions out as possible. Maybe just uh, banking on the Trinity Oath here next turn. Still, the uh, Magma does ha have access to the Plasma Storm next turn, so. Yeah, Plasma Storm's gonna be good. Unfortunately, Plasma Storm not gonna get rid of this 
Um, Aurora, you do have minions on board, you're currently cleared. Um, <laughs> but, like, again, I'm not seeing how you clear this and get rid of the other minions this turn. Uh, that being said, a interesting piece of tech that these Magma decks have started um, running or incorporating um, for a while now would be a dampening wave which in this instance would have been a really sweet way just to clear this um, Aurora with minimal uh, cost, keep your board and uh, potentially save you to, yeah, like use that plasma to clear more minions, well, uh, the slasher rather to clear more minions next to it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately that was not the case. Um, as Magma, I'm not very concerned about my health at this point. The minion's fairly weak. It doesn't seem to be that Brown's going for a uh, aggressive strategy like the one we saw in the previous match. There's going to be no buffing or a spell boost shenanigans going on here. We're just looking to play as much minions to the board as possible and get this trial going. Yep. Uh, there's the fealty. A card I just never kind of get my head around. But more cards fueled to the fire. <laughs> that is true. Uh, fielding not something that I felt that this particular version of the deck needed. Um, but again, that could just be could just be personal preference. I liked I liked slower versions, whereas fealty would always felt out of place. I could be wrong. Uh, the Trinity of always felt like fine to me in, in this particular shell. Um, like I would have liked if if well, I'm not saying it doesn't, but some s silver gods uh, would be very appreciated. Uh, people tend to overlook the <laughs> pure value cards that Lionel still has, yeah, and try to go a bit too all in on some of these strategies. Oh, very good play there. Um, I I would have liked if somehow we could take this towel. Um, it, line of player is going to be able to develop a Jack Strew site, which um, luckily Magma has plenty of answers for. But Fritz on four cards, let's hope he drew one to deal with this impending Jax. But like, Fritz's board is also pretty scary right now with those less lessers and. And that Metal Earth is still alive, so... Yeah, so Metal Earth is just going to be enabling uh, the Slashers and Rage Binders to heal them back up. Um, again, life is not your concern that much if you're the Magma player at, at this point. You're just playing for board. Um, if I was BBC, I'd be concerned of this Varf just starting going face and railing against you. Yeah. Possibly. Like, you could be in a spot where if you did not have Jax this turn, or even if you do have it, that he just goes face and clears it with plasma, and next turn goes face and clears it with another plasma or a rebuke, and at that point you just on a clock that I just don't think BBC is going to have the time to play the game plan that he's looking to play here. You could like very easily clear those uh, board here, but uh, then you don't get to play the Jax, so... And also you lose quite a few a few minions here, so... Yeah, so we're gonna clear... I... We're not gonna clear interested. anything. I am interested that he didn't choose to clear the Slasher at all. Um, like, I get why. It, you know, it gives you some protection uh, against potential Plasma or, like, or Rebuke, somewhat. Uh, but it, if, if that was the case, you could've just moved this... You could've honestly just just move this um, Jaxi just as far away as, like as possible. Don't even put it in range. Mm. That gonna get the job done either way. Uh, potentially signaling a plasma storm, which would be very good here. Then again, Plasma Storm will have been like an instant play, I would feel like at this point. So, a Rage Binder. Alright, so we don't have Plasma. Possible uh, rebuke. rebuke, there we yeah. have it. Still pretty decent here. Yeah, as a, 
as I mentioned, now you're in a spot where you better hope uh, this VARP doesn't keep on drawing plasma, but there we go, the Bears Betrayal online. Uh, this Jack's coming next thing going to be really good. So worst card possibly played against you at this point would be uh, War Beast. Uh, possibly seeing the Rage Binder clearing uh, the 5-5, five five, allowing the Slasher just to come on in here. Uh, yeah, and get some damage in. Burns is running on, only on three cars right now, but it does yeah, seem like it's a, like a more traditional, like a controlly wasp that doesn't focus on going face so hard. Yeah, honestly, this just seems like a traditional, as you said, value varflet, man. Mm. So, I'm not totally sure it's uh, like a very good tech against this uh, trial list, but yeah, no. Look, I I still think I still think the trial deck is a um, uh, favorite to be honest. Um, we'll also say I don't quite like that, but I get that you're positioning around the potential jacks. Grandmaster. Uh, Grandmaster, honestly, Grandmaster, I don't really care about. Uh, you weren't going to be killing this Brome anyway, and because of the trial, it's going to yeah. transform next turn, so I'm not that concerned about its effect. Um, but you're not going to see any Desi spikes coming out? No, definitely not. <laughs> uh, this Ash method. Like a inclusion, but not many of these decks tend to include. It is it is a quite good and valuable card. Um, it's something that was more popular when Brome itself was a more uh, prevalent deck. So it was incredibly good against the um, mirror match, and just like instantly won you the Brome mirror in most cases. Very old card, and it used to be. The laughing stock. The laughing stock, indeed. Also quite good in Ox, mind you. Yeah. All right, so we're just straight up going to be clearing again as magma. I'm not really concerned about my HP. Not much burst in these lists. Um, feel fairly safe as VBC. I'd probably be looking to develop. Uh, right, this is a tough one. Um, being on 8 HP, uh, you could just be a war beast away from being dead. That what attack buff coming in, pretty strong. Yeah. Usually you'd be pretty safe at this point if you were like a VPC, but that four attack into Macantor is just pretty awkward to play around. I mean, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a Macanti. You can like you have no real burst to speak of, so he can just hit you. Uh, after playing a plasma and just do the same next turn and that'll be it. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna roll the jacks out and see what we roll. Um, Won't the, uh, yeah, the uh, method be a bit easier or safer or better? Uh, I don't know the aligner minion count at six, so I don't. Seven HP. Is Indominus a seven? A mana? Or is it eight? Because Dominus would be a s solid thing to actually draw yeah. into. But that said, Grandmaster is what was it? Eight mana. Oh, Titan. Titan. Unfortunately, Unfo yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not gonna be good enough. Let's smack the face. Oh, Dextonic spikes. And there we see it. Yeah, that's going to be it. As I said, um, eventually it's just going to come down to a life race, and if Mag draws their removal, you're just in a really tough spot as Lion over there. Um, traditionally, Arjun being the better of the Lion Generals against Magma, um, 
due to his ability to be able to buff uh, his minions out of plasma range. Um, but yeah, this is another case of Swarm falling to the wayside, a good old mid-range valve. Again, uh, we move on to the Caliber versus Tony C Camel matchup here. This is gonna be uh, Abyssian Mirror. Oh, so this just seems like a traditional uh, Agro Casper list from the looks of it. That trail is sort of a dead giveaway. Um, Recombulus. I remember when that card came out, it was pretty. Lots of people yeah. tried playing around it, but. Not not sure how I feel about that card. Usually a, f a fun inclusion, and I can respect that, but not really a very good card uh, in ladder or in or well, most lists, really. And if you want to just teleport minions to your repulsor beast, the art dog is usually just better, uh, but also too slow in the current meta. Yeah. That being said, uh, Tony playing not trial mave uh which basically means he's possibly playing a deck which doesn't suck <laughs> uh, could be really tough to actually deal with um Cassava not really known for a lot of ways to remove um, high hp minions and beast tempo mave lists do have quite powerful openers involving um azure shaman and he has the uh, Moth actually has the highest win rate tied with Kalius. The same exact number of games and wins. That's actually super interesting. Uh, like, look, again, uh, Tempo Mave has got some really powerful openers. A Shaman is just really powerful. Uh, HP buffs in general um, make some minions incredibly hard to actually clear. Uh, ooh, Mind Lab. That's a spicy one. Uh, Mind life better on ladder. Um, ironically, uh, it's something we used to run. Uh, Min Max uh, brought it up originally, but it's something that we used to run in our aggro Casper lists, sort of as ways to combat uh, Wanderer, as you could just be as aggressive as possible and the turn they play Wanderer, play Mind Life, and just hit them for a ton of damage. Yep. Um, not really something that ever caught on, but that said, Agro Cassavers is not that popular of a deck. Um, so yeah, I could see why. A Teller's list seems kind of interesting, so... You have the Mind Laugh, of course, and so forth, but you also have the Recombos, and... And like, not a lot of like, uh, traditional Cassava cards, per se, so... Yeah. I'm not sure uh, if it's like, cared for like, a uh, early mid-game dominance or it's just I don't know, neutral minions feels weird honestly, now. yeah honestly there's an argument to be made just for equipping um, and clearing this ball free nothing else you really do is going to build much ball I guess you could try to play it safe and play a defensive uh, blaze hunt but you're just burning a card at that point yeah I'm giving more fuel to Tony all right, no, we're gonna be playing the blood tier and possibly just developing the uh, recombinus. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about this play to be honest, but it does contest the mana tiles, which is uh, good. But then again, you don't have anything to actually ramp up to, so that's so great. <laughs> yeah. Um, is Drawing or rather, our blood one spell is going to be active next turn, so this could potentially set up Grasp of Agony uh, as a board clear. Which looks like Tony might be having a similar plan or looking to clear this turn. Gosh, is that our first Herald that we're seeing in like, <laughs> three games? Absolutely. And yeah, there we have the grasp of agony. I feel this this kind of like weird balance going on with the uh, meta that some, as you keep saying that there some people just keep going into all into these acro strats or like whatever combo strats they're going for, 
but then again these lower decks seem to be just coming ahead yeah but like look it, it's it's just constant fight between having a optimized list and having a list more balanced for tournaments i honestly truth be told uh duelist tournaments is something which has slowed down quite a lot in terms of how many we've had over the years mm. uh, but players i think have forgotten how slow the metas in these tournaments tend to be you could have uh, tempo argion just absolutely dominating um, ladder for months on end and the very have that plays three zeros you know that's just the meta that we are used to we're used to playing these slower more control based games and mm. Traditionally, uh, aggro decks, um, especially some as all in, has visa been has just been punished hard at these tournaments. Yeah. And also, like the, like the balance did, uh, kind of number on the faster decks. So. Oh no! Absolutely. Like uh, the bans really hurt. Uh, say Lance uh, was very instrumental in allowing Magma not to have as tempo oriented aggro decks, well not that it mattered much in the last game, they still have a lot of damage in the tank um, the same for uh, Lionel um, and Songhai with Panda being removed, it, it, it really did a number to slow down the format um, so it, I, I do feel good seeing some players going for a more shall I say tempo oriented approach rather than just straight up being aggressive, yeah. Uh, I, I'm just disappointed I'm not seeing any herald so far today. That's just kind of shocking <laughs> to be honest. Right there we have the uh, desolator. And there we have desolator number one of, I presume, many triggers this game. Still a really tricky card to play around, just because of the. Uh, well, that being said, there's dish. a very, there's a very tricksy play you can do here. Uh, you could actually mind laugh, hit the desolator, and, well, just straight up steal it. No, that's not going to work. It's not going to survive, is it? Actually, not sure. I don't actually know the interaction there. Yeah, I mean, I have um, done similar interactions with minions such as bees, but I can't remember using it on Desso. But if you're going for the, if you assume that the interaction works, you're still going to be in the range of like 6 damage next turn, so... Yeah, so either way you're looking to be in range of a lot of damage. Um, I do know that if you, I do know that if you use... Uh, the Truvian spell is kind of uh, running away from me at the moment. Um, is it, what is it? Three mana Vitruvian spell that steals a minion with two attack or less? Uh, psychic Strike. I, uh, psychic Conduit. Yes. yes, there we go. I, I do know if you Conduit, say, a Desolator and kill it, then it does come back to your hand. Yes. That is pretty annoying, it. might be. Uh, so if you Super Mirage them and, you know, manage to kill yeah, them. Yeah, no, we don't. We don't talk about that. <laughs> I just love the, the uh, Super Mirage because it lets you do all kinds of weird things sometimes. Oh, there's just some brutal things. Um, you could just be playing Songhai, playing your painter, think you're in a good spot, and then poof. <laughs> three of them, <laughs> that's the game. Um, so, yeah, very interestingly, this is what cases see the aggro Abyssian player being on lower life, being behind on board, and just really struggling to get a grip on this game. Yeah. No big minions, all your removals are kinda awkward. Desolator doesn't really you can't really clear and that thing. Yeah and again Abyssian not known for having transform based removal so this desolator is just gonna keep on chipping away at you. You do have the Dark Transformation, but that card has kind of completely disappeared from the map after the meta changed. Well, in the same vein, Dark Transformation also isn't a transformation spell. 
Yeah, well true. As, poor, <laughs> as, as poorly as the card is worded. <laughs> Ugh, all these grasps just not doing very all much at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but this is a tough one. Uh, probably you're just looking to get rid of this of blood tier. Um, potentially just create your own blood tier, get some board going, um, and just void pulse, get some life. Yeah. But other than that, not much you can really do at the moment. Yeah, opting to do just that. I kind of really want to see what kind of like uh, bigger cards Gallery ha does have going on in, in his deck because we've basically seen everything has been like less than four mana or. See, that's the thing when I talk about op optimization versus just having better tournament decks. Um, they could have argument being made for playing a aggro Cassivalist a lot like this, but um, hell, in including EMPs. You know, for instance, including um, even including uh, spectral revenant, just just having some sort of way to still have gas and transition to the late game, because as as we see here, you've got all these highly tempo efficient things that you're doing, but they're so small, you know, and low value, even though you've got so a, a lot of quantities of it. Uh, but that's just not good enough. Um, like you can't be healing two here and chipping away three here yeah. when your opponent just seems to be going bigger than you and having more healing than you have. Yeah, the Desolator trick with the uh, max uh, PPS is just like you heal, you get 4-4 four, four out on the board and your opponent is like struggling to clear that 4-4 four, four with his cards so and like no the board to speak of it's as a Vetruvian when I'm in that position it's like you know it's just a slow death at that point. Yeah. Uh, like, what's the play even here? Do you just do you just sword and just throw as much grasp of agony and do as much damage as you possibly <laughs> can? The the issue is you just have no board. Yeah. That that does seem to be what the play is. I mean, what else can you do? Yeah. Just gotta go play with your outs, but like 20 health. Tony can just smack face and win the game. Mm, this gibbet is kinda interesting. Oh, but and there, as I said, just just wow. the player with the bigger end game, just um, once again showing that going over your opponent is just better in this tournament format so far. All right, let's uh, move on to the next game. The Eastern Europe once again had a kind of apparently bit of a scheduling issue, so there's going to be a lot of perks and uh, gallery in this matchup. Uh, <laughs> let's see if this is the. Brexit on full showing today. <laughs> All right, Chad, speak with me. How are we doing today? Zeb, I, I I hope you're on your way to work yet. You shouldn't still be here. <laughs> All right. We have. I. VPC. There we go. I, this is what I'm talking about. VPC versus Perch playing Wolf. But as we can see, that um, that finality just really showing that Perch to take the game longer if possible and not just trying to end the game early uh, as some of these decks tend to do. Uh, um, it's a really good card in this format I think. 
Uh, sure, a really good point. Uh, quite potentially poor in this particular matchup, though. Yeah. I will say. Like, again, this is not... As you as Valve are really not going to be caring about your HP much at all. You're just going to be playing towards board. Uh, but, yeah, very similar game where I think we're just going to be seeing double metal just being developed here. Is this and, the same uh, game as before? Yes, it is. This is, a, this is actually the exact same game as before. I mean, it isn't, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm testing you, chat. I'm making sure that you know what's going on. We are not tired, and this is professional cast. No, 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 like, this is way too professional for that. So I hope all of you are paying attention. You should be noticing that. I'm disappointed here. Actually, that wasn't even the game I wanted to show, but, you know. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, okay, I need to... This is the game I wanted to show. Absolutely, yes. I need more coffee, uh -huh. but it's okay. So, Birds versus Tristan. You have Shira versus uh, Ragnora. Mm, so, interesting. Um our Songhai expert is getting confused, so this must be a really interesting deck list we're seeing. Oh, it's it's just an interesting hand. You don't normally see a combination of Silhouette Tracer um, and Blood Range Mask, since Silhouette Tracer is more common in the artifact variants, um, whereas Blood Rage is more common in Mantra. Uh, this could just straight up be a Mantra. They don't traditionally, well, at least until until we originally made the deck, they don't, don't traditionally run, say, Spiral. We've always opted to go a bit faster. Um, but yeah, we'll see. So, pretty easy turn, we equip the Mask, and we go from there. But again, this could just be showing Curtis' skills as a as a deck builder. A Tracer is a very good uh, tech card. It does help a lot with mobility and getting out of tricky situations, and just also body blocking. People, people really don't do this enough, but the amount of times that I've simply used the Tracer to body block myself into a corner and buy us off turn. Again, having 6 HP, it's not that easy of a unit to actually get rid of. You see the Flame Blood coming up down. In second Flame Blood? No, silly though. No. Double flame blood will not be ready. But a fairly easy clear here if you choose to have it. Um, but do you actually need to? I do not think so. And I think it would probably be incorrect to try and clear this board. Uh, you honestly just don't need to. If anything, I'd simply Phoenix fire uh, the young Silifor and go Tatsu it and move away. There's no reason to try and contest center against what is clearly a aggro Ragnora. If not, you could potentially equip Spear. Um, I don't know how they want to go into artifacts, because this list, are, they are playing Flame Bloods, they're probably playing Blood Tears. Um, if we see the Spear here, we're probably just going to see straight up. Uh, I don't know, I would have liked the Phoenix Fight to go face in this instance. Yeah. But again, probably banking on he's not taking damage, not losing charges. Opponent likely can't clear all of these artifacts. Uh, and if Rag goes center and tries to clear it, probably going to take three damage in the process. That Thunder Bomber, great draw. Bird's going for the uh, mana tiles, but. Oh, oh. there's the Abjic Aegis. That's cruel. That is just brutal. Um, honestly, if I'd be feeling in a pretty good spot if I was the song I play at the moment. Ragnar on 14 HP. Uh, possibly get rid of one of those adjudicators. And wow. Um, 
I don't actually like playing Adjudicator here. There's no point in discounting anything in your hand. That spiral realistically has not been a factor in this game. Um, not with the hand you have. Yeah. I think just a little tracing here might be just okay. But that doesn't look like the play they're gonna go for. So it's probably gonna be adjudicator here. Mm, I feel if you did go tracer, you'd probably uh, like you need to respect. Yeah, you need to respect the fact that your opponent could have a combo over here. So I potentially try to keep that mask up. I mean that spear up as much as possible. Mm. Um, and this actually makes your adjudicator much better because while using it there does nothing for you, as the game goes on, that discount's going to be looking a lot more valuable. But again, Tristan needs to look out. Um, so I play a full grip of hands, we could have a lot of damage coming next turn. And he's already down to 14 health here because of all those flame bloods and tectonic spikes, so... Yeah. And see, again, that's the thing. People are playing all these small minions, you know, whether it be eggs or tokens or... Uh, Shiro's, like, whatnot. But even something like a Tracer is just incredibly valuable. Uh, Rock Adopter too, just either in their ability or just the fact that it's a solid uh, body which you can use to body block to clear minions to deal a little bit extra damage uh, so we're unlikely to see a clear on this tracer over here which again probably makes this play from Tristan a little bit more complicated than it needs to be so there's probably going to be some kind of hatch play coming up yeah clear. there we go Looking to get some damage in there. Clean up the artifact, which I think it was like the very important thing to do, but... No, not really. Uh, so probably going to see the Mana Vort Like, there's an argument actually to be made for holding on to Mana Vortex. You do have a Spiral in hand, so that's potentially a play you can do... Uh, yeah, like, pretty, pretty damn soon, mind you. Um, we could just be... Okay, no, no, definitely. You could just look to clear the egg. Clear this Inceptor and see if we can push some damage towards face. This Rage Reactor... That probably will not get any value this game. No, very unlikely. Um, Yeah, looks as uh, that is what we're doing. Thunder bomb to clear up over here. It's just a hard matchup for this uh, Ragnar player here. Oh, and that blood rich monster is going to be very rough. Um, if Rag doesn't develop minions, you could just look at a turn where Chris is going to equip blood rage mask, use your BBS. Uh, Clear that artifact, use Phoenix Fire, either on Rag itself or one of his minions, maybe mop that up with Tracer. Um, we could possibly be seeing a Mikanto over here, mind you, but again, that's not going to clear the Tracer. Tracer is then going to be able to clear the Mikanto, and the same line of play still stands. Yeah, you can just. Uh Doing some them. number crunching over here. Yeah. Doesn't look like it's gonna be a mechanator, so Erratic Raptor. Erratic Raptor. Interesting. So it's not str just... straight up acro list, but Still. Yeah, probably just looking to put as much pressure out as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, the Subjudica is probably not doing 
as much fear over here. I still like keeping the mana vortex. I still think that enables either either the early spiral or also potentially a mantra that you could draw into here. Oof. That, however. <laughs> That's pretty oof. Uh, I was just thinking if he had gone for the yeah. play. Yeah. No, this uh, this seems fairly evident to me. You can use the adjudicator to attack into one of his raptors, move your general um, up to move away from Agnora, clear the raptor. You're possibly just going to uh, use the tracer to punch the other raptor, clear it with a phoenix fire. You're just looking to get as much spell procs as possible here. Get them low enough, and two spirals potentially coming through. That should be enough to close out this game. Playing around the cantor, and there we see it, just pushing some damage. No real reason to use this mana vortex, as it is going to enable us to use the more expensive spiral. Uh, or in this case, um, potentially spiral and phoenix fire in the same turn yeah. if if this tracer is not cleared looks like that's the you know discussion going on that we just you know vertex and spiral and like, phoenix fire and do blah, we, blah. yeah it's particularly rough if you're tristan over here because you probably want to clear the tracer, but at the same time, you can't really get rid of the artifacts at the moment, and you should be feeling pretty confident that at uh, 11 life, you m just might not be high enough. The Miraculous Health Threshold you need to sustain against Songhai is probably way uh, above 20. I, like, look, here's the thing, you could be a really good player and you could be confident in your damage break points but as soon as that first adjudicator comes down everything's game yeah like that just throws any math you had right out the window in silifar um a earth sphere would be really good but again not something that we've really been seeing a lot of um, in these ragnora lists mm. or healing in general Oof. This is really awkward. So, possibly gonna replace this vortex. Doesn't seem to be doing all that much. Or no, we're actually Just going for play of you. Oh, okay, sorry, I forgot about the Blood Rage Mouse proc is gonna do it there. Okay? And that's gonna be it. That is going to be it. Yeah, that's rough. Like, look, it, one of the few cases where going first is actually beneficial, traditionally against Magma, is equipping that early artifacts. Um, they just are poorly equipped to actually deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, and since they don't have much, say, range to their minions, it's just tough. You can just run away from the whole game and chip away at them. Uh, and again, not seeing heralds, not seeing healing of any sort, uh, just an incredibly tough matchup over there. Absolutely. Uh, so how are we doing on energy levels? Energy levels, we were born tired, so in other words, good to go. Okay. Let's see what else we have. I do want to see some one hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you mean you want to see some banner? We were just talking about diminishing energy levels. <laughs> but we haven't seen like, like a lot of fire around so which is very interesting because like I think fire is a fey or as you say one or is uh kinda big win rate in this tournament. It makes sense in a sense. Okay. 
Moon Shadow, not a player that I'm very familiar with. This is probably the game. Absolutely. Smack Star Horn. Um, Megazor has always been a polarizing deck type, even after the change, mind you. Uh, the tricky part is trying to have a fat balance where you're playing these obviously not good um, mech cards with not a fantastic <laughs> payoff um, especially against something like Vano they've always sort of been the premium faction um, against Mechazo itself but that being said unfortunately you have the advantage of also playing magma cards so some incredibly tempo efficient tools you have at your disposal um, and honestly, you could just put a Mechazo in the face. You don't even need to put it in range, and you probably shouldn't, given that they'd be playing Chromatic Cold. Yeah. I think this Star or Mech list was pretty popular at one point, just because of, you know, the magma removal, but also the card draw was very huge. You can fill up those yeah, cheap Mech minions very quickly. Yeah, mm. it, it just attacked decks at, um, to, at multiple angles. Uh, the spell, for instance, isn't something uh, that necessarily was as popular against Magma, uh, simply because their minions, you know, had all these effects, whether they play a Slasher or a Mechantor, like, the spell never really did much for you, and now they're playing, say, these uh, mech minions, and now you want the spell. You know, so it, it was just incredibly awkward to, to accurately deal with. It's one of the things that made Chrysalis burst when that card still existed. <laughs> uh, such such a powerful addition because it asked you to play AOE against Magma. You know, like this is not a faction that you traditionally needed to play air of effect um, spells against, and now all of a sudden, well, well, now I do. Yeah. Is it uh, silver in the hand? So, yeah, pretty common, silver. like a second win condition you can find sometimes with the um, rush. Definitely, and it was also made better by Magma does have access to Flash Reincarnation, so they are able to play uh, these mechs a lot faster and get mechs online a lot earlier than most factions would be able to. Snow Purser. Alright, so seem we have a good old traditional aggro Vanal list. No tokens coming up. Still, I think one of those uh, decks I think people are like miss uh, that looking because I think Acro Vanar would be pretty good in this format, like a lot better than like uh, Ragnar Acro we saw earlier. Yeah, like look, um, it's I'm sort of caught in between because Vanar, a Vanar Acro to me is is in this weird place where I I don't feel their minions are particularly good. Uh, They've obviously got incredibly poor healing. Like I don't think um, I don't think Shroud is a very good card. But that being said, they they've got the type of removal spells which reminds me a lot of of the Trubian Aggro of, of old. Now Chromatic Cold and Hailstone is no siphon, but the same principle applies. Of I play my stuff, I ignore your stuff. Yeah. Um, and that type of tempo plan, it can be incredibly powerful if piloted and played correctly. Yes. So it's going to be um, interesting so, so to see the uh, response to this port state here. Yeah, this chances are going to be pretty hard to uh, deal with. Um, you do risk losing your artifact, although at this point I don't think that's really something that you or actively playing around. Uh, possibly need a blood tier to get rid of a force field so we can clear that. Uh, if not... 
Yeah, even go so far as just backing off and get rid of that wings. Yep. Hellstone would be pretty good, just Hellstone to just side. Oh, Hellstone, Hellstone and just go face. See, the issue you have in this matchup is if your opponent has a, a Hellstone or hell, even what he's doing now, uh, a Prince is already on 12. Yeah. So not sure the silver um, and so forth is going to be fast enough, but we are going to try and see if we can get mech online, and uh, yeah, hopefully our opponent doesn't have removal. Nicely spaced the minions out. Make sure to trap the uh, winner player in the middle. Yeah. And get to play Mechazor nicely into the face. Just as close as possible to play around them, potentially having chromatic cold and making it useless. Um. I remember, like, all back in the day when Mechazor was kind of coming back, people were like discussing at this point that usually the thing you do is you put it in the corner, but Mechazor actually does have frenzy. So, and it also has the force field, so if there's no dispel directly, it's a pretty damn good minion to front line for, I mean 6-6, yeah, six, six, force field just like his face. Yeah, and at the same time there's some interesting little things that this can do here, one of them being how rebuke interacts with frenzy, potentially having his Megazord attack twice. Uh, doesn't seem like Tristan actually has an answer to this board right now. It's, it's well, fair. Yeah, the problem you have now is with that mech not being cleared and possibly the chassis not being cleared. Uh, you looking at a potential silver coming down next turn, which could spell a lot of trouble for little Miss Fay over here. Oh, there's the flame blood. But unfortunately, down to two cards in hand. Um, and not sure they can deal seven damage without having flame bloods. But still, be pretty concerned if I'm Prince if I'm not going to draw any healing over here. This is just the uh, evil. Just setting up, getting in as much damage as possible. No blood on Mendo, so I think Pierce is feeling pretty safe here. Yeah, you should be feeling pretty confident. Um, a Bloodborne spell and two Flame Blood Warlocks is gonna do it. Um, as will a combination of flame blood warlocks and blood tears. Uh, could even potentially see a BBS crypto, BBS into flame blood. So there's a few things you can do um, without having to utilize all three cards in hand. Um, but again, again, you're on three cards in hand, so you better have those cards this turn. Because this is not looking like a board that we're going to clear anytime soon. Enfeeble potentially will buy Vanar a turn or two, um, but again, that's one of those one of those spells which uh, not really seen much play in Beast Tempo style decks, even though arguably it really should be. Oh, I, there's the blood band. Yeah. I think this might be more straight up acro, Vanar. Just from the quality of minions here, so, so probably sure. just route into the late game. Well, unfortunately, no shrouds to be seen, and that's not gonna be good enough, and that's gonna be game. Close, but no cigar. Go and 
make money, Jason. Make us all proud. <laughs> all right. So that was that. No, Zohan, this is a mech-free space. We do not cheer for Starhorn so much as we enjoy Faye losing. It's <laughs> like little balance we're going for. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for us this week. What do you say, Jim? That feels like a good time to spot, uh, stop for this week. Uh, no other team has completed the games yet. They have received an extension until Friday, and uh, next week is, I think, going to be the second last group stage. So, slow play warnings all around. This is Team Wars season two, three, and four all over again. <laughs> well, you know, match organizing is really hard. <laughs> Time zone. You know, it it it's always irritating because. Uh, but I know me and Zab, for instance, we always had to stay up until like 2 a.m. in the morning, and you'd be playing until 5 a.m. And there's like some asshole in in America who who can't make it at 8 o'clock on a Friday evening, and you're like, oh, come on, <laughs> you know? Like we're pulling out over here. We're like going to work at nine, staying up until six without even playing a game because Mana is being a dick and just sweeping all the games. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, fun times. Anyway, uh, that, as I said, it was it for this week. Songhai and Magma seem to be the clear winners uh, this week. Lion are taking a little bit of a hit, and Vanar, well, still being Vanar, well, yeah. um, didn't see that much of Abyssian, uh, other than obviously that one uh, Maeve match. Quite impressed that Maeve is performing as well as she is. Um, well, four fours are pretty hard to deal with, yeah, especially four, four fours eights. Yeah, pretty hard to deal with, um, both for Songhai and for, well, mo like most of other factions. Magma only really having Rebuke, um, and Lilith, I can see why we'd see less of her in general. Traditionally kept away fr by more of the existence of Valve, and especially uh, maybe Songhai in general. Um, but from what I see, apparently even Lilith has quite a few wins under her belt, so enjoy seeing a few more of those games too. But yeah, my takeaway so far from this is, please guys, when building your decks, try to go a, a bit bigger. Um, like, I know optimization is a thing, but you need to be able to transition into the late game, otherwise you're just going to get hammered yeah. in these tournament formats. Um, but yeah, bring, bring some interesting decks, go and get creative, and yeah, look fun and see what you bring next week. Yeah, absolutely. Like, this is no longer you win at six mana game, so. But anyway, thanks for my part as well. And as always, please do send any interesting games you meet. And thanks again for Eros and Jay for staying up with me so late and or early in our case. And see you next week. No, always a pleasure. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy.